Very well done. What an understatement of a 2013 article in the Catskill Horse referring to the Nita Fall Festival. It went on to say, with seven rings going at once and nearly 700 horses on the grounds and 1,600 rides, this was a very big event to organize and entries were turned away. According to Beth Jenkins, Nita simply couldn't handle any more without a larger volunteer, uh, volunteer base, which left a waiting list of hundreds. By 2016, the show had grown to 737 competitors and 1,814 rides. It's hard to bring forth the thought of Nita fall dressage competition without the mental images of Beth Jenkins flashing brightly to the exclusion of any other thought, says Alexander Dane. There is little that anyone can say about their relationship with Beth that would match the decisive contributions she has made to New England Dressage Association and the growth and viability of dressage itself. We all have found ourselves grateful, inspired to try harder, and learn from her as she guided us with a keen sense of humor to understand and to try to emulate. Above all, Beth gathered everyone into a team that is always far greater than the sum of its members. When I asked Beth what her greatest challenge in the near 30 years of managing the Fall Festival, she was quick to reply, Hurricane Floyd, <laughs> which was a Category 3 hurricane in September of 1999 that pummeled the New England coast with gale force winds and heavy rains. On, on the Tuesday before the show, I was thinking that if I just drove my car into a tree, I wouldn't have to deal with the show and all the challenges coming from that hurricane, she recalled. But Beth survived that crisis and many more years in that following. However, she is quick to credit her show's success to an amazing sport team. Support team. I've added it all up. It takes about 160 people to make the whole show work. We get them, and they are great. Beth herself knows a thing or two about volunteering. She's been a NIDA vice president, manager of the NIDA summer show in the 80s and 90s, and the competition director for NIDA. <laughs> According to Paul Cormier, Beth Jenkins has been volunteering to Nita 50 years since early 1970s. Joining in 1972, she is the longest serving member of the New England Versace Association Board of Directors. She was the person behind computerizing the process to put membership on a database, which was no easy feat. And using her experience writing computer software for Honeymoon, she was involved in designing the present online NIDA accounting system, as well as the membership and event systems running behind the NIDA website. Beth was recognized for her many contributions to dressage by the USDF in 2008 as a volunteer of the year. She has been involved in show management since, the start, since starting the NIDA Summer Show in 1980 and is the author of the original USDF show biz. She served as vice president of USDF from 2010 to 2013. Beth actually rode saddlebreds as a child, growing up outside of Chicago. And wouldn't that be, as you'll hear later, a coincidence that she and Sally Davenport rode at the same place. Later, she attended Denison University and received her BA from the University of Pennsylvania in American political history. Intrigued by its artsy precision, Beth became a dressage enthusiast over 50 years ago. Beth started dressage training with Pamela Fitzwilliams in 1970. She has worked with the likes of Carl McCulka and Sally Swift and participated in instructor's clinics with Andrus Lindgren. And over time, Beth started teaching lessons and clinics. One of Beth's most creative ventures came in the late 80s when indoor arenas were a rarity in New England. She created an unmounted series called Riding Through Winter then consolidated with, Beth, with Lindgren teaching notes into a book for the dressage novice called Notes for Riding Through Winter. Teaching grassroots dressage back in the early days, in the 1970s and 80s, was not for the faint of heart. When a fledgling group wanted to put on a clinic or a show, they didn't have much to go on. 
active for YouTube uh, or even VHS tapes. So according to Bill Woods, Beth would sometimes show up to teach, only to find her rider standing around in an empty field. Arena, what's that? She would then have to find holes or logs to drag into a rectangle and use buckets to serve as letters. Back in the day, her enthusiasm and efforts helped many pleasure riders get bitten by the dressage bug. Best got her first small R judge's license in 1977, and a few years later got her large R. She retired from judging in 1996. She is acutely aware of the importance of fresh judges education and has been endlessly supportive of the USDFL program by providing opportunities for education and testing at NIDA shows, and particularly at the fall festival. Many judges have been tested or promoted as a result of her efforts to accommodate the program. From all the people I contacted, the consensus was that Beth made things happen. Good friend Fern Feldman recounts, Beth and I worked together on the Region 8 Championships during the time when I was Region 8 Director. But that might be a little misleading, as I really should say, Beth ran the championships while I kind of tiptoed around her, not really in a position to make too many suggestions or changes. Granted, she had years of experience on me, and I knew she'd do a great job, but my approach certainly had to be delicate, as one might say. Thanks to her, though, the Region 8 championships were huge, successful, and wonderful. We owe her a huge debt of gratitude. Of course, I asked Lois Eukins, who has become our unofficial keeper of Versace history and stories about Beth. I was asked about Beth, and I was bombarded by memories of her contributions for Nita and the many years living in New England. I first knew her when she hired me to judge at one of her shows in Massachusetts. She asked me to, duck, me to use a duck call instead of a whistle, and I refused. <laughs> Little did I know that she was the kind of a person that never stood down from a challenge. She sent me a, out a clown horn instead. <laughs> As time went by, she helped me in my judging career to go from R to S to S to FEI. This help was never just to help, but to build up a group of supporters for the sport. She would ask me for advice on who to hire and which group of people got along. She was the organizer of the first need of CDIs in Halifax, Massachusetts. She picked the judging teams, the best announcer, and a group of show workers. During this time, there were several hurricanes that postponed the competition, but she still made it happen. I remember one time when one of the judges fell in love with a Jack Russell puppy at the show. So Beth arranged for transport for that puppy to Germany when it was old enough. She made things happen. Then there was 9-11. Planes were grounded, borders closed, judges and competitors stuck. Beth found judges that could drive many, many hours to officiate and made things happen. Eventually, this show grounds could no longer handle the amount of competitors, and the show had to move to Socrates, New York. Beth worked hard on this and ran the fall show for many years until it became the largest show in the world with a CDI, regional finals, open show, and breed show. And she made it happen. I have so many memories of Beth in action, and I'm always humbled by her organization and activation for our sport of dressage. Alexander and Dane summed up in her, of her memories. I was privileged to be a working stiff from the very first show, and Beth held my hand while laughing at my lack of comprehension of any skill that would get my job done correctly. I did manage to learn enough to keep Beth laughing and have such happy memories of our times together. Beth enriched my life, and that of all to whom she gave of herself. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce Beth Jenkins as a USDF Member of Distinction.
was thinking of dirt about me. I didn't know he dug up that much dirt. I am glad I have no secrets. <laughs> All right. Tonight I'm here to talk about butterflies. There's an old legend. It's called the butterfly effect. A butterfly flaps its wings in Australia. And two years later, the result is felt in Singapore. Three butterflies flap their wings and led to me here in Omaha tonight. The first butterfly flapped its wings when I was nine years old. I was a kid and a friend piled me up on an American saddlebed, slapped him on the fanny and sent him to the show ring. I was hooked on horses. That was the first butterfly. The second butterfly flapped his wings in 1961. I was graduating from Penn. I needed a job. They said, you belong in this new field called computers. I said, okay. Got a job writing computer software. The third butterfly flapped his wings maybe 10 years later. I had moved to a horsey town outside Boston. I had a husband and a toddler. Money was really tight in those days. I managed to find $250 and bought an American saddle standard bread straight off the trotting track. His name was Comet. He was a really, a really nice horse. I had some boarders to help pay the bills. One of my boarders knew about this new organization called New England Dressage. It was being formed by Priscilla Endicott and her friends in a town near me. Pamela Fitzwilliams was a trainer in, in Priscilla's barn. And she was teaching dressage lessons. I had never even heard of dressage. I had no clue what it was. But Comet needed to learn to can't. Okay? So, I had managed to find some wheels for my horse. It was a one-horse trailer on a Model A axle. It was handmade by in wood. It was olive green. And it looked just like an outhouse on wheels. <laughs> but it did the job. I stuffed Comet in that trailer and off I went to this fancy farm in Harvard to learn about dressage and Comet was going to start to learn to canter. <laughs> but pretty soon, I got wheeled into writing computer systems behind New England Dressage and landed on the NIDA board in about 1972. At that point, I look and I say, three butterflies flapped their wings and 50 years ago, there I was, an aspiring writer. I didn't know anything. It's frightening what I didn't know. George has given you a pretty good history and caught some of the highlights of what I did over the years. So I do not need to tell you about some of the more interesting things, but I will tell you that every time I go by that one telephone pole in Framingham, Massachusetts, <laughs> With the hurricane due in 12 hours, I really seriously thought about driving my car into that telephone pole. So that, I didn't want to kill myself, I just want to get hurt enough that I can get the deal. And every time I drive down that street, I look at that telephone pole and I say, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> because when that telephone, when that, hurricane hit, we had to vacate 300 horses off the grounds, okay? But we managed to do it. I don't know how I did it, but anyway, we made it happen. But all of this because three butterflies 
flapped their wings, and I became an aspiring writer. And I then followed a career that was based on four, four, 50 years of volunteer work with NIDA. And all my learning was because I could learn from what NIDA provided and what USDF provided and stand here today. I thank all of the wonderful people that I have known all, all along the way. I haven't been to a convention in five years. My body is giving out. And it's been like old home week for the last five days. It's been wonderful. And in the final message, I suspect that for every last one of you, some butterflies have flapped for you along the way and landed you here in Omaha with me tonight. Thank you, Mark. Thank <laughs> you.